So let's see how point addition actually works on an equation level. So we want to add two points. Uh, for that we have to find the line that goes through both of those points. So we can do that by first calculating the slope of this line, uh, the German Steigung. Um, so we do that as we have learned in school. Um, here denoted by S is the slope and then we can using the slope um, derive the addition laws for getting the x and y coordinate of this point p, q, p plus q here you can see this one is inverted because we're gonna want to invert the whole thing um, yeah. so these are the formulas in the associated reading materials you can look up how they are made of, but for our case that's not so important. Um, problem is that this formula only works if the x-coordinate of p and the x-coordinate of q are distinct. Because if they're not, if the x-value of both points we want to add are the same, we actually get a zero here, right? This will be zero and then we would have to divide by zero and dividing by zero is strictly prohibited as you probably know so what do we do well if x and if p and q have the same x value but another y value the points are actually inverse to each other so by definition the result would be the point at infinity which is our neutral element. Otherwise, if q, uh, if the y values of p and q are also the same, then it's actually the same point, p and q. Then we actually have to double the point. Instead of adding the same point to each other, we have to double it. So we need a second formula for point doubling. This here was point addition, now we need point doubling. So in order to do that we need to tangent of this line at the point P. So we can compute the slope of this tangent with this formula and then use the normal point addition formulas for finding this point and then inverting it and then having the point doubling result. But that only works if the y coordinate of p is not zero, because then we actually have another intersection on the curve. curve. Because if it is zero, the y coordinate, then the point lies on the x-axis and is inverse to itself. And then by definition, the result of the point doubling would be the point at infinity, the neutral element. Whew. Okay, so all of that gives us a addition law for our group of elliptic curve points that we could implement here in pseudocode. That is, if we want to add p and q, which consists of two coordinates each on a curve in the short Weierstrass form with parameter a and b from the curve equation we would first have to check okay is p this mystic point at infinity if so it's a neutral element so the result is q if q is the point at infinity we do the same for p now now we have to check if q is actually the inverse of p and if so the result is the point at infinity then we could check if p is actually q if it's the same point because if it is we calculate the slope from the tangent if it is not we calculate the slope of the line going through both points and once we have done that we can actually compute the new 
x value of the resulting point and the new y value of the resulting point. By the way, this a here, for example, is from the curve equation, right? Um, so now you might know why elliptic curves tend to be seen as mysterical or mysterious objects because this group that we have defined is based on point addition and point addition seems pretty complicated because we have a lot of different cases and we have to check for things and we have to handle this weird point at infinity that we are not really sure what it is so we have a lot of special cases and the addition law is fairly complicated and everything that's fairly complicated is of course error prone when implementing it so later during the lecture we will see other forms of elliptic curves that can be used that have a somewhat simpler addition law but for now we're gonna stick to the Weierstrass curves that are given by Weierstrass equations.